Welcome to the second half of Module 2 on Genomic Selection, where we're talking about what is genomic selection and how it works. There's quite a few different models for genomic selection. The example I've been using is a, a model that's based on relationships, and it's called Ridge Regression, RRBLUP, sometimes also called GBLUP. This uh, is a method that predicts the value of individuals based on this relationship matrix or by looking at individual markers and doing those regressions for each marker. It really, in this case, treats all markers equally in terms of how much variation they can model. It doesn't mean all markers have the same effect, just that all are e weighted equally. Now this uh, bothers some people because we know that some regions of the genome don't affect the trade and therefore maybe should give, be given a weight of zero. Well, other regions of the genome may affect the trait greatly, and there should be given much greater weight. But RRBLUP does not do that. It's sort of a naive approach. It considers all of them to have equal uh, weight. But the advantage of the RRBLUP is it's computationally fast. It can be run on a laptop. Analyses can be completed in a matter of hours. And generally, it's as accurate as the other methods listed below, which are seem biologically more accurate and more important. But they tend to give about the same results as ridge regression blup. And due to the fact it's computationally fast, people like to use the RR blup. Other methods, though, is a, there's a Bayesian method. And this is one that does give higher weights to some loci that are considered important. In fact, some loci even give them a weight of zero and don't contribute to the prediction models. There's a reproducing kernel Hilbert space, the lasso method, elastic net, and there's others too that I'm not going to mention. So uh, there's many methods. So let's look at the accuracy of genomic selection with some of these different methods. And this is data from my program with uh, looking at different models of genomic selection for wheat traits. And here our accuracy is defined as the correlation of the observed phenotypes of lines with their predicted values, the GEBVs. And so for here is a, the trait grain yield in wheat, ridge regression blup, the accuracy was 0.33. In other words, the correlation of phenotypes with predicted values, 0.33. The Bayesian method was a little bit better, 0.34, but not much. And in fact, you look through this table here, you'll see that Ridge regression blup, very simple, computationally fast, even a bit naive, but it's either the best or the second best. And when it is second best, it doesn't, it's not second by much, as you can see in some of these examples here. So therefore, because genomics, the, the ridge regression model works about as well as everything else, and it's computationally fast, it is really widely used. So what are the basic steps in genomic selection? Well, the first one is very important, and we'll talk about this in one of our later modules, but it's develop a training population. And this is a set of lines that are going to be phenotyped and genotyped, and the data is going to be used to build your genomic selection model. You phenotype those lines, and you also genotype them in step number three. That data is brought together and you use it to build your genomic selection model that can be used to predict the value of individuals that have not been phenotyped. Now, from that training population, you can pick the best individuals, and you have phenotypic data, you have estimated breeding values, you use both to do your selection, select the best individuals, cross them, and get progeny from those crosses. In step number six, you genotype those progeny, and using the model built in step number four, you predict their value based solely on their genotype data. You predict, you obtain their GEBVs. From that, you select the best of those progeny, cross them, and then with step eight, you simply go back and start steps six and seven over again. And this right here is really completing a cycle of genomic selection. Your selection is based solely on the estimated breeding values, on the genotype of the individuals, and you can move through these, these steps 6, 7, and 8 very quickly. Now, here in step 7, you've taken the best individuals and you've crossed them, but you might as well take those best individuals and also 
put them in field testing. You've predicted that they are superior, then you could put them in your field testing program. Steps one and true, two though, are absolutely crucial. We'll talk about step one later, but we will not talk about accurate phenotyping as most people already know about that, and that's actually will be reserved for a different set of uh, topics, a different, different class. So here's an example of looking at the, the predicted values of individuals. This is an example out of my program. We're doing genomic selection for fusarium head blight in wheat. Uh, there are multiple fusarium head blight traits, such as index, ISK, toxin levels. And we actually take a lot of these uh, individual traits, run them through principal component analysis, and that kind of gives you a nice integrative measure of the value of individuals based on all those traits. Uh, we had a training population of 649 individuals. They were all phenotyped and genotyped. We took the best of those 649 and crossed them, made best by best crosses. From that we derived F2 individuals from those crosses. We had 998 F2s and we phenotyped them. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, we genotyped them. And then we could predict their value based on the model based that was built on the training population data. And that's what I'm showing you here in this table. Each row is a different F2 plant. These are F2 plants from cross 61, so they're all full sibs to one another. F2 plants all from cross 52. F2 plants all from cross 64. And in this visualization, anything that has a dark green color is good. And anything that has the dark red value is bad and everything in between is moderate. So we look at these uh, four columns of data, four traits if you want to think of them that way, and from there we can select some of the best individuals. So individual 52-6 looks pretty good, dark green for three out of four traits. 64.2 looks pretty good. I'd probably like to take those two and cross them. In many ways, you look at this table, and it's something that breeders are used to looking at all the time. You got rows for each genotype, and you got columns for all the traits that were rated on those. Really no different than doing phenotypic selection, except to how did you get the values that go into that table. One aspect of a genomic selection that's particularly appealing is something called rapid cycling. Genomic selection allows you to go through a cycle of selection much faster than you can normally do with phenotyping for most traits in most crops. So to do a rapid cycle gen genomic selection, of course we start back up here with our training population just as we said before. Phenotyped, desired genetic backgrounds, phenotype to get high heritability in relevant environments, and you genotype each line. You develop a genomic selection model, select the best lines, cross them, get an F1. You take the F1 and self it to get F2s. The F2s are then genotyped and based on the model built uh, from the training population you select the best individuals based on their predicted values, cross them and get the F1s. The F1s go back to here and you just keep going through these steps for each cycle of genomic selection. This plan here takes two generations so as quickly as you can go through ten, two generations, F1 to grow F2s, F2s to cross and get F1s, then you can do a cycle of genomic selection. For me in winter wheat, two generations would take, two, take one year in the greenhouse. Other crops, it might take much less time. Again, you got these best F2s, you've crossed them. In my case with wheat, we also take the best F2s and also self them. And those self families then go out into our fields breeding program and get phenotyped. Summary. Genomic selection uses phenotyping and da genotypic data from uh, past trials, training populations, if you wish, to predict the value of untested individuals. It is useful for traits controlled by many genes with small effects and certainly can be combined with marker assisted selection. And GY, uh, genomic selection uses marker data from the whole genome to predict the value of an individual. And in the simplest cases, it's all based on relationship 
between tested individuals and untested individuals. Here is a quiz. Again, if you wish to take it, that's fine. If you don't, that is also fine. And if you wish to send me your answers so to see how you did, I'll be glad to take a look at them. Thank you for viewing this material, and again, contact me if you have any questions.